Hey guys, I'm Nia and this is the first of many more to come videos on screening guidelines. As you know, they are very high up for the USMLE step exams as well as for your medical career. And sometimes it can be difficult to understand them, especially if you're using sources that give you different information. So while I was studying for my step exams, I did a thorough research on no screening guidelines and I really want to share this information with you. So let's get started. Today we'll go over the lung cancer screening guidelines as well as solitary solid pulmonary nodule guidelines. So let's start with lung cancer first. So in 2013 there was this huge randomized clinical trial that took place. It was called the National Lung Screening Trial. It involved more than 50,000 people and they found out that if they screen certain people that are at high risk for developing lung cancer, uh, with low dose CT scan, the mortality, the uh, lung cancer deaths actually decreased with 20%. So after this clinical trial, the US PT PSTF, which stands for the United States Preventive Services Task Force, they updated their lung cancer screening guidelines and they are as follows. So we screen every year with low dose CT scan, which uses up to 90% of the ionizing radiation the normal CT scan uses, the following people. So they have to be between 55 and 80 years of age and they have to have history of 30 pack year of smoking, which means that they have either smoked 15 years, two packs a day, or they have smoked on average one pack a day, one pack a day for 30 years. This is what 30 pack year means. So they must have this history 30 pack year and they should be either current smokers, this is supposed to be a cigarette here, or they must have quit within 15 years, quit smoking, right? So, when do we stop screening? We stop screening if the patient is over 80 years of age or they have quit smoking for more than 15 years. Moving on to solitary solid pulmonary nodule. The lung cancers that present with such nodules are adenocarcinoma, large cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Remember the adenocarcinoma is the most common lung cancer in non-smokers and along with the large cell carcinoma are found most often in the periphery of the lungs. Whereas squamous cell carcinoma, remember all the S's, squamous cell for central lesion, hypercalcemia because it releases PTH-related peptide, smoking most uh, often seen in smokers and it creates cavitations. Now if you see multiple lesions in the lung, what are you thinking of? Is it cancer? Is it like primary lung cancer? No, it's metastatic. Remember, metastatic lung cancer is never solitary pulmonary lesion, okay? It's always multiple lesions. And the most common uh, cancers that give meds to the lung are melanoma, breast cancer, sarcoma, testicular cancer, just to name a few. Solitary pulmonary nodule is defined as a lesion which is more than 3 centimeters in diameter or more than 30 millimeters. So what do you do if you find it incidentally on chest x-ray? What is the best next step? You ask for an old chest x-ray, uh, chest x-ray, exactly. Now this is a little bit of old information here. Remember that chest x-ray does not give you a precise information on the growth or on the size of the nodule. So in real life we ask for old CT scan or we do immediately CT scan to see the characteristic of the nodule. But on the exam, because the USMLEs don't get updated so fast, if they ask you what is the best next step, you and if, if you see in the uh, answers ask for all chest x-ray you pick that answer okay so be as it may if the patient has old ct scan or chest x-ray we have uh, to evaluate now what's happening with this nodule if this nodule has been stable for more than two years and uh, it has benign features which we'll discuss in a bit then you do nothing you let it be it's a benign lesion but if the nodule has grown in size, which is defined as growth more than 2 millimeters in diameter, then you do biopsy of that nodule and eventually resect it because probably it's a malignant lesion. What do we do if the patient doesn't have any old imaging studies to present? Well, depending on the size of the nodule and the malignancy pretest probability that we'll discuss here that combine uh, risk factors from the patient and the characteristic from the nodule, we manage the different nodules differently. 
So let's go over this now. So patients at low malignancy pretest probability have the following characteristics. They are less than 40 years of age, they have never smoked or they have quit more than 15 years ago and the nodule itself has smooth borders. Remember smooth borders, benign lesion. If this nodule has calcifications and the calcifications are popcorn-like, most probably it's hamartoma, again another benign lesion. Or if the nodule has calcifications that are described as laminated or central or diffuse, these are all calcifications seen in uh, tuberculosis and uh, histoplasmosis infections. Okay, so patients at intermediate risk are between 40 and 60 years of age, they are currently smoking or they have quit less than 15 years ago and the borders of the nodule are scalloped or lobulated. Synonyms, scalloped, lobulated. They love uh, giving you this characteristic on exam day. So make sure you remember those. And um, patients at high risk probability are the ones more than 60 years of age who are current smokers or who have quit less than five years ago. And the borders of the nodule are uh, speculated, also called as corona radiata. By the way, this looks like this, like the sun. It looks like this. And scalloped lobulated looks like this. The calcifications here in the high pretest probability nodule uh, are eccentric and asymmetric. Depending on the size of the nodule, we can evaluate it with two different criteria. The first one evaluates nodules which are less than 8 mm in diameter, it's called the Fleischner criteria, and the other one evaluates nodules which are 8 to 30 mm in diameter. So, this is the table here, it might look complicated, but it's really not the new scene right now. Uh, here we have the low pretest probability patients, the high pretest probability patients, and then the, the size of the nodule is equal or less than 4 millimeters, more than 4 to 6 millimeters, and more than 6 to 8 millimeters. So, low pretest probability less than 4 or 4, we do nothing, probably it's a benign lesion. In high pretest probability less or equal than 4, we do low dose CT scan in 12 months to see if this nodule is growing or not. Now, in 4 to 6 millimeters, in a low pretest probability, again, low dose CT scan in 12 months, and in high pretest probability, in 6 months. In 6 to 8 millimeters, in low pretest probability, again, repeat the low dose CT scan in 6 months, and in high pretest probability, in 3 months. So, see how they're going? So, first, we, 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 we don't screen here, then 12 months, 12 months, 6 months, 6 months, 3 months. So if you remember this table, it should be more than enough for your test. Now, in nodules which are 8 to 30 millimeters in diameter, we use the intermediate pretest probability as well. So in low pretest probability patients with a bigger nodule, 8 to 30 millimeters, we have to repeat the low dose CT scan in 3, 6 and 12 months. In intermediate probability, we, we don't do low dose CT scan, we do immediately PET CT scan to evaluate if this nodule is metabolically active. And if you see high metabolic activity in the nodule, you go straight to biopsy to check uh, if it's cancerous or not and eventually perform surgery. In high pretest probability patients with a nodule 8 to 30 millimeters, you have to perform surgery immediately because most probably this lesion is cancerous. And this concludes this video. I hope this information is useful to you. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.